Hello all welcome back in this one we're going to learn about a new concept called selenium manager this is inspired by webdriver manager which was a third party library but now it's built in into selenium so let's right away jump into the code and understand what it is and how does it make a difference into our lives right here i've created a class called selenium manager demo and what it does is it pretty much does the basic operation of setting up the system property for the gecko driver creating the web driver instance then opening the web application and then just printing the title and quitting the browser now the key here is system dot set property before version 4.6 of selenium web driver we have to set system property for the driver to be able to work with that driver right if we were working with Chrome browser right here, we'll have to set webdriver.chrome.driver. What happens if we run without this line? So let me comment out this line. Let me open pom.xml. The version of Selenium I'm using right now is 4.5.3. And with this version, if I comment out the system set property line and run the code, let's see what's gonna happen. As soon as I run the code, what happens is it gives me an error that illegal state exception and the error says the path to driver executable must be set by webdriver.gecko.driver system property and we pretty much know about it right that's why we were always using this line to let the system know where the driver files exist now i uncommented the line i'm gonna quickly run it once again just to show that it works with the line and we saw that the code executed it has also quit after the code was done home page was printed here which is the title and we don't need to worry about these red lines these are not error from the automation code these are just coming from the gecko driver and they don't interfere with the automation as we saw that the browser was up and running perfectly fine so this was a very big issue in the current world with browsers being updated every four to six weeks keeping the drivers updated was very challenging and often used to cause automation failures because of outdated driver files. Our code couldn't find the correct driver file or the browser updated, but we don't have the latest driver file. It was just a constant thing that we have to keep updated outside of our automation framework, right? So what Selenium WebDriver did is they incorporated the concept of webdriver manager which was a third party library into selenium now it's built into selenium and made our life very easy what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna go to the palm.xml and i'm gonna change it to 4.6.0 basically you can change it to any version after this when i'm working on this video the latest version is 4.9.0 but I'm only switching to 4.6.0 to show you that this is the version where the change took place. So I'm gonna save the palm.xml, go back to the code, expand the Maven dependencies, and right here we can see that the new files are 4.6.0. And you will also see that there's a new jar file added, which is known as Selenium Manager. In the previous versions, you would not see this file. So this also tells that the functionality is changed. Now what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna actually comment out this line. Save the code and run it quickly. It brought up the browser, opened the website and quit the browser. That's what we expected and it's working fine. Even with the system.set property line commented out. We don't need to do anything extra. We don't even have to import the Selenium Manager class here. What it does is it automatically figures out your browser version and downloads the same version of the driver file into the cache folder on our local system. And even if we upgrade our browser or it automatically upgrades, what it's gonna do is it's gonna download the new driver file into a separate folder and it's gonna maintain all those versions. So we really don't have to worry about upgrading browsers. It's a singleton class and there's only one method that we can access in the class. I'm gonna quickly show it to you. So I'm gonna say import org.openqa.selenium dot manager dot selenium manager. Selenium manager is the class here. And if I dig into this class, you will see that they already explained that to implement this, we use a singleton pattern. And you will see that there is a get instance method, which is something we can use to get the instance of this singleton class. And there's only one public method 
which is get driver path how we can use it we can actually use it to get the path of the driver file like wherever selenium manager is doing the magic wherever it is saving the driver files we can use this method to find the path of that and it only takes gecko driver chrome driver ms edge driver as the names of the driver files okay so let's quickly go to our code file right here i'm gonna say string driver path and then i'm gonna get the instance of the selenium manager selenium manager dot get instance and then dot get driver path inside this i'm gonna provide the argument as gecko driver and this is just optional right we're just trying to find the path of the gecko driver you don't really have to use this in your code and if you are curious and you use it then please make sure you provide the correct input here okay and after the title i can simply print it out driver path save the file and run it we can now go to console and find out the path that's printed so we can see that it saved the driver files under users my username cache selenium gecko driver win64 the version of the gecko driver and gecko driver.exe so this is really important right it actually saves it with the version tomorrow if there's a new version it's going to create a separate folder and then save the new file there so let's quickly go there to figure it out c users my username cache selenium gecko driver win64 and the version so right here it's going to create a new folder if there is a newer version of firefox browser and gecko driver in future so right here all right so that's really great and if we ever provide this path here for system dot set property then this will take preference so if you have a file saved somewhere and you really want to use it you can still use it so the code is not outdated it'll still work all right that's about it if you found this video helpful please like and share with your friends please let me know in the comments below about the topic you want me to make the next video on and don't forget to subscribe for more such interesting videos signing off i'll see you in the next video